Yakimo. 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 Your name. Eh? Your name. Your name. Yakimo Rocket. No, sure name. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Oka, Oka. 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 Nice to meet you. YouTuber? Uh, YouTuber? Uh, yeah. No, no, no. No, no, no. What? 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 After having my sober lessons, I thought it could be a great idea to take advantage of this fantastic trip and check the different varieties of mochi. We are making mochi in the kiosk on Queen's Walk in London, but of course, it is always great to see and try different types of mochi made in Japan. In my first approach, I visited the hectic Nishiki market. To describe mochi, it is a paste of rice that can be shaped in different ways. There are endless varieties including fillings of bean paste, strawberries, the layer of rice can even be with herbs, it can be even savoury. <laughs> I ate a variety of mochi which was crispy and a lot drier than I'd tried before. I got just this like toasted flavour. I wasn't expecting it to have a filling in this one. to Nara, which was the old capital of Japan from 710 to 794. Of course, I came across the colossal Todaji Temple, and it was phenomenal. In the surroundings, I tried several kinds of delicious mochi and I went to Nakata Nido, a famous shop where I could see this spectacular technique of pounding mochi.
I have to say, this was the best mochi I've ever tried. The texture, freshness, all the layers created an amazing flavour. After this fascinating experience, I wanted to expand my knowledge about mochi. So I visited Yoshida Sanso, a legendary venue located in a fascinating place. In 1932, this was the second residence for Higashi Fushimi no Maya, Emperor Showa's brother-in-law. In 1948, this former villa was transformed into Ryori Ryokan Yoshida Sanso. The small house where the cafe is located used to be the garage, and now it is a lovely spot which feels out of this world. I ate a variety of mochi which was made from 18 different types of grain, and it was in a format that I had never seen before. I was lucky enough to talk with the owner the lovely Tomoko-san. She was an impressive woman with great values towards this family dish. By the farm, yes. Shoku is really important. Shoku means a food, cuisine. And uh, that's very important how to make, how to, to be made by, by chef, and by the shop who sell those. Uh, ingredients and vegetable, everything that needs, but more importantly, uh, based on the farm, where it comes from. Okay, it's very who, important. Yeah, very important. Who makes that? Uh, with a lot of chemical things to make it make grow, make it grow beautiful, looks beautiful, or with the color, what the taste, taste I don't know, but uh, organic way. Probably the way of look is ugly sometimes, a different yeah. you know, style. And maybe the color is different, doesn't look like um, delicious. But uh, more importantly, it's really good for your health. Mm. I loved the mixture between her traditional mindset and the international projection, having even a sister in New York to expand the Japanese cuisine. Do you know in Korea, they, uh, they have similar kind of things, topogi. Oh, never heard Top of that. Uh, topogi <laughs> is white thing, then different shape. Like Probably long? Long one. Oh, okay. They cut like pasta. Okay. Yeah, and <laughs> it's chewy and sticky, like exactly mochi we have in Japan. But um, uh, the shape is like gnocchi. When you gnocchi, but like made some... by, yeah, gnocchi made by a potato. Yeah. But uh, made by rice. It was fantastic to meet her and talk about the transferable and cross-culture techniques and overall the importance of the care for the primary elements.